Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux and I'm still not very well so this is still going to be a bit more chill than usual. But we're going to start off in research and development to pick up a few tech nodes at the beginning of this episode, episode number four, because the science space station that I set up in the last episode, well that has been gaining some science in the background. I'm actually a lot worse today. Yeah, my cold has gotten worse so it's even more difficult for me to talk today but... That's beside the point. I want to get these episodes out. Currently, they're coming out once, one episode every other day. And I'm not doing anything at the moment. I've got university starting up again in a week and a half. So whilst I've got a little bit of free time, I wanted to try and get as many of these episodes out as possible. Even if I am sick and I'm progressively getting worse. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but hopefully, hopefully I should be better soon. It would be, it'd be nice to be able to breathe properly again. That's, that's always nice and it means I can talk properly. But anyway, what we're going to be doing in this episode is we are going to be sending a, well, if you, if you can't tell, I've been working on a rover on screen whilst I've been nattering on. Yeah, we're going to be sending a rover over to hopefully Fury and Hydrus. Now, I'm fairly certain at least I think I'm sure that I've got transfer windows up to those two planets, so we are going to try and utilise them. Uh, I'm probably going to be completely wrong again because of the way Principia works, and I can't use transfer window planner or anything like that in this series. It is rather difficult, and I have been working on a little map trying to work out the ejection angles where, well, how the planet should relate to road when I want to leave for an optimal transfer window. And I have also worked out the rough delta V requirements that I should need to get to all of the different planets. And I did post that on the Discord just to make it a little bit easier for myself to roughly see how much delta V I would need to go into planetary. Because obviously the system is scaled up three and a half times. It is going to be different from stock beyond home. And I have had to work that out. And I just use Principia Flight Planner to try and roughly gauge how much delta V I would need in order to perform an optimal home and transfer. Anyway, so I, I have tried to figure that out. This rover that we're going to be sending over, well, it's going to have all of the atmospheric science that we can possibly fit onto this small frame because both Fury and Hydrus do have atmospheres. They're atmospheric planets. And of course, we want to try and farm as much science from those as possible. That's why we've gone for a rover rather than a lander because rovers can move. And I do have Bon Voyage on this save, so what we can do is we can land it and then if we get enough electric charge from the, the power sources on the rover, then we can get Bon Voyage to move the rover in the background. It's really great mod, really helps save me from having to drive a rover for four hours to just change biomes. So hopefully that will get us a lot of science. What we're doing now is working on a bit of a transfer stage. We're going to put some communitrons and some solar panels on this so that we don't run out of power on the way to those planets because that would be rather terrible. Yes, I, that is a mistake that I have done before and I would, I'd rather not have that. But we have grabbed the Paladin one and we are going to be using this rather large launch vehicle to launch them. So this is the first launch and we're going to attempt to go to Fury to begin with. But unfortunately... I forgot to set the root part from the rover to the probe core that I put on top. And this is the first time that I'm using Ascent Guidance in this save. And those two features together, well, as we can see, that didn't go particularly well. And we come crashing back down into the ground. I couldn't save this at all. I was hoping that I might be able to recover some of it, but alas, no. And that's mainly because I had... I had the rover set as the root part, so obviously the nav ball was sideways. Anyway, we are going to launch this again, and I'm just going to be going back to using Smart ASS to get this up to orbit, rather than using Ascent Guidance, because I did do a little bit of a trial run with Ascent Guidance, which I haven't shown here, and because I'm using very low thrust to weight ratio upper stages, the standard stock Ascent Guide, it doesn't seem to like those launches at all, and it can't seem to make it to orbit, so... I'm just going to have to sit through the launches just clicking on the pitch button until I get myself a nice orbit and I'm looking at my Kerbal Engineer Redux screens on the top left and the top right just trying to make sure that the orbit is all good. It is nice using Ascent Guidance because it does mean I can just sit back and relax but to be honest getting into orbit in this series takes about six minutes which is more, it's longer than stock but it's not as long as Realism Overhaul or RO, so it's, it's a little bit nicer in that regard. But 
we are coming up to our orbit now. Here I am just trying to really fine tune this. We're going to cut the throttle a little bit and try and hit our Apogee or our Apple Apps around road as soon as we finish our burn. And there we go. We've made ourselves into a 110,000 meter by 104,000 meter orbit. Now what we're going to do is we are going to plot our way over to Fury. And if you look in the top left, well, we are 109 days into this flight. That's right. I completely missed the transfer window. It was it was really bad. I thought I'd got it spot on. And to be honest, even now, I'm not sure if this is an ideal transfer window because when we arrive at Fury, we're going to be going about 7,000 meters per second. Well, 6,200, I can see it says on Principia there at the moment, which is pretty damn fast. Although Fury is the closest planet to the center of the system. So I, I do know that it would actually require quite a lot of Delta V to slow down once we get there, but it does have an atmosphere. So we are gonna try and use that to slow ourselves down and land with this Rover. There we go. We have performed our burn now and we are going to be on our way. Well, we almost performed our burn. There we go. It has, it has finished now. We had to use quite a bit of the transfer stage. We used a little bit of the launch vehicle to sort of propel ourselves, start our start our transfer burn, but we had to use a bit of the transfer stage to actually get us on the way. And we've got 1,350 meters per second of Delta V left, which we are going to be using to form a deep space maneuver to get us nice and close to Fury so that we actually hopefully capture in its atmosphere and come down. But now what we're going to do is we are going to launch the second rover and this one is going to be going to Hydrus. Now I thought Hydrus was at roughly the same time as Fury for the transfer window and I do believe that I have to wait for this one a little bit as well but nowhere near as long as I had to wait for the Fury rover. Anyway we are now into orbit. I skipped that launch because it's essentially the same launch that we just saw and there's nothing really different about it but you can see I have had to come 52 days in the future for this so not quite the 102 days that I did before, but still my, my timing is does leave a little bit to be desired. And I think with the temper system, so this is something I think someone asked me to kind of go into a little bit. Obviously I'm using Principia, which is why the map or the orbit lines look all funny and squiggly. It adds end body physics into the game. So you're not constantly on rails. Every single celestial body in the system will have a pull on everything. And that leads to all of these kind of weird, funky looking orbits, or so I believe. Because the Temper system is a binary star system, none of the orbits of the planets are particularly circular. And if I go on the map screen, I don't know when I'm next gonna get it up, but if you look, it's kind of like the planets are creating a flower pattern around the center of the system, because obviously there's two massive stars in the center of the system yeah you can see the orbits aren't circular at all it looks like there's loads of flowers being drawn on the screen this makes it quite difficult to achieve any kind of interplanetary transfer because the planets apple apps and peri apps compared to the system center is changing constantly dependent on where the two stars are it's making transfer windows honestly a nightmare. I don't have any of the mods that I usually do to try and work them out. And because I have to account for this as well, it is proving rather difficult to actually get any decent interplanetary transfers. And that's one thing I think later on in the series when I unlock some really nice engines, well, I will be using more Brachista Crone trajectories, such as burning straight out of planet, getting halfway and burning to slow ourselves down. And it'll be a lot easier to try and plot out my maneuvers that way using Principia. At least I'm hoping. We'll unlock torch drives in this series. It's, it's going to be fine. I've got far future technology and that is definitely something that hopefully we should be able to pick up in this series. Anyway, we have now plotted out our route to Hydrus. We have completed our burn. What we're going to do is we are going to come back to our Fury Rover. And I was filming this whilst I was still unwell and I was having massive coughing fits whilst I was doing this and unfortunately as I was about to start the burn I suffered a bit of one of those and somehow because I was coughing I smashed spacebar on my keyboard staging this meaning that we were unable to complete the 900 meter per second burn or thereabouts to actually get us an encounter with fury so that mission 
was completely unsuccessful. That is just going to remain in deep space for all time or for about five minutes until I go and delete it in the tracking station because Principia, you need to get rid of craft that you're not really following because it does lag the game out quite a lot. Anyway, the Fury, not the Fury, the Hydrus Rover even was much more successful. And I think I did perform this at a good transfer window this time because we barely needed any Delta V to slow down into a nice stable Hydrus orbit. And to be honest, we had enough Delta V in this craft to probably do a propulsive landing on the surface of Hydrus, which would have been really nice, but I have got the parachutes and all of that. So we are going to ditch this transfer stage. We're gonna grab some of the science from the rover as we go down. Unfortunately, our antennas have snapped off though, so we can't transmit anything until we unshell the rover that's in this kind of black shell that we've got going on. There we go. And activate the antenna that is on top of that. Now, I didn't want to activate this until we were on the ground because obviously we did see the other two antenna break and I would rather not have this break because, well, then we would have no way of transmitting the science at all and that would be a huge waste of a mission. I'm always hungry for more science. That is a science career, and I want to get as much science as I possibly can so I can build bigger and better and more awesome things, like the picture that I posted up on YouTube the other day of the, the Lude Rover. I think, it, what was my name for it? The, the Lure Expeditionary Wheel Device, I think, and I just said something like, oh, I should not be posting lewd photos on YouTube because obviously that was the acronym. Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't that funny, but you know, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> anyway, now what we are going to be doing is time warping, or not time warping, what's it called? Doing a time lapse of four hours of me driving. Yeah, and I'm going to fit this down into a minute. So I did sort of talk about Bon Voyage earlier on. I can't use Bon Voyage at the moment because we do not get enough power from the solar panel on this rover. We do get enough power from the wind turbines that I've got from Planetside Exploration Mod. However, they aren't taken into account for Bon Voyage. So I landed on the North Pole right in the center and I wanted to get to another biome with this so we could gain a little bit more science. And obviously we were in the dark as well. And you can see we are, we can see destiny and fate over now in the distance, but it was gonna take a really long time to drive anywhere. And we were only capable of going about 10 meters per second in this Rover. So yes, this was a very long drive ahead of me. And you can see I am going at three times time warp. I daren't go to four times because I felt like if I went to four times, that's when things would have started getting a bit crackeny and things would break. So as I said, I daren't go to four times, but I did. And because of that, well, the back solar panel decided to explode and we flipped up onto our back and we didn't even leave the poles, so that was a little bit of a waste. And with that entire mission, we only gained 384 signs, which was enough to get heavy command capsules, which meant that I created this really silly looking device using the Mark II lander can to basically go around the Kerbal Space Center and try and farm all of the signs from all of the different biomes around the Space Center. I was going to do this in a different episode, I was going to have the Hydrus landing as one episode and kind of like the following content in another one, but it turned out that the Hydrus landing didn't actually take that long because the Fury lander failed. But we got 485 science with that, which was more than going interplanetary and landing on a different planet, which I thought was a little bit nuts, I should have done that a long time ago maybe, although I wouldn't have had the Mark II lander can to try and farm all of that science but for the end of this episode i still haven't unlocked heavy aerodynamics and i really want that tech node because that's gonna mean i can create procedural fairings that are up to 12 meters in diameter and it also gives us larger grid fins it gives us a lot of tech in that tech node which is going to really help with bigger launch vehicles and bigger stuff that we are going to send to space so in order to get that last 300 science that i want i have mostly unlocked all of the different scanners so we are going to create the APS which is the all-purpose scanner yeah very inventive name we're going to launch it on a barred one that has been kind of fitted so that it no longer has a reusable first stage because obviously that didn't go very well in the last episode 
I think it was the last episode that I, I tried using reusability for the first time. But I have already filmed the next episode for this, by the way. Obviously, I, I showed the the lewd on, on YouTube before. And we are going to be going back down the reusability route in that episode. And it's going to be, it's going to work a lot better, hopefully, now that we've unlocked a few nicer parts. Anyway, yeah, all we're going to do is we're going to go to every single moon in the road system and we're going to scan. We're going to do high res scans, altimetry scans, visual resources, all of that. So we're going to know everything about the surface of these moons. And I'm going to do it to every single moon, but I'm only going to show the ash one because in my particular opinion ash is the coolest looking moon in the road system much better much better looking than lua or armstrong and lua and armstrong were a little bit more of a pain to do because getting a stable polar orbit on either of those moons it's just not possible due to principia they are too close to road and they are too small that road will just pull them out of their orbits but ash is rather easy and we can just leave this satellite around ash until we get some lovely maps of the surface and we're able to transmit the science back and we get 370 and of course because of that we're going to pick up heavy aerodynamics straight away and that will be the end of this episode in the next episode we are hopefully going to be launching the lua expeditionary wheel device which is going to be a mobile base on the surface of lua Hopefully I'll be a little bit better by then as well. I, I, I would like to think. But anyway, that's been it for now. I've been Kanasa and I'll see you later. <laughs>